Hey folks, this is Cindy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today's video is for the Hero Arts 2018 Summer Release Blog Hop. I have two videos to share with you today. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Hero Arts Desert Sunset Fancy Die. I really love this die, folks. It is a very simple die. It's very simply shaped, but I could think of so many different things you can do with it. Okay, so let's take a look at our products here. I am only going to be focusing on the Desert Sunset to die for this video. However, I am going to show you the stamp set that I use on my card in the other video. It's just how I managed to film this. I decided to fill them both at once and then use them both for the same video, I guess. But anyway, let's take a look at this. All right, so this is the Desert Sunset Fancy Die. I can think of so many different things you can do with it. You could mask with it, you could stencil with it, you could die cut some foam and stamp with it. You could die cut a whole bunch of cardstock and you could really st stack them up and make that your one and only focal point on a very clean and simple card. Again, there's so many things you can do with that. All right, so this is the Cowboy Life stamp set. This is what I used on my card for the other video, and I am over the moon for this stamp set. I love that there is the option to make feminine cards with it. You could skip the flowers and do something masculine with it. I love all of the sentiments on there. It says cowboy or cowgirl. Again, feminine, masculine. I think that skull is very very groovy. I love just the simplicity of the guitar on it. It's just a really great stamp set. Totally worth checking it out. And I had a blast making the other card with it. So the card that I'm going to do today is actually so simple. You could probably make a set of these. You could definitely mass produce these. You don't only have to do one. Now, I only did the one primarily because by the time I had gotten it done, I thought, you know what? I don't need a bunch of these cards, but they would be so easy easy to do a set of them with the different sentiments on them. You could definitely split up the sentiments from this cowboy life stamp set and put them all on the front of this card or whatever you'd like to do. So let's get started here. I have a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock and I have it cut down to four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. Honestly, I don't need this much. I just hadn't decided exactly where I was going to lay this out just yet. So I decided to grab a standard a2 size card panel and work with that. I do have just the die laid out here on my panel. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to trace around it so I can line up my the stenciling that I'm about to do or if I'm just going to leave it. At the end of the day, I just decide to leave it because it doesn't matter. I can place the stencil any place I want and my desert sunset die is going to go exactly where I need it to in the end so it doesn't matter. So I made a stencil with the Safari Sunset Fancy Dye and some Graphics Acetate. And I have some Tombow Mono Multi Glue on the back of these. I did let it dry. So it's basically, it's a temporary adhesive at this point. And there's the positive and the negative. And I'm going to get rid of the positive piece here and just use the negative. Now, again, I can put this anywhere on my card panel because at the end of the day, I'm going to trim this down to fit behind the Desert Sunset Fancy Dye. So it really doesn't matter. I can place it anywhere I want. As long as I have a really good seal on this, that's that's all that's important here because I am going to be doing some ink blending over the top of it. And as you can tell, there's some of this that sticks out. So there's they come to a very fine point. And when you ink blend over that, it's so easy to catch those and pull them up and get ink where you don't want them. So I'm just making sure that that's nice and sealed. And that's another reason why I use the Tombow Mono Multi Glue because once that dries back and becomes temporary, it still has a really good seal, but it does not tear your paper. For the life of me, I have no idea why I decided to mask off the edges of this panel because I was going to cut it down anyways and it didn't matter, but whatever. So now I have Hero Arts, a bold hybrid in a mold wine. I'm starting at the bottom because I, this, I want it to be darker at the bottom when it's on my card panel. And I'm going to go lighter at the top. At the top of this, I'm going to have a dandelion ink and I'm starting at the top and the bottom. So as I add my other colors, I could work towards the middle and then I make sure that I have an Enough room. Now I'm bringing in tangerine ink. All of these are hybrid inks. You could use any type of ink, any color of ink you would like. I decided to use these because they were super, super bold. And also... I saw these, this uh, color combination some point, somewhere. I cannot for the life of me think of where it was. It might have actually been 
Um, someone on the Hero Arts team and did it for one of their posts. Anyway, I couldn't find it, but I thought this color combination was brilliant, so I decided to go with this today. So now I'm working with the Hero Arts Hybrid Strawberry Ink, and I got a little bit more over on that tangerine than what I wanted, but it's no big deal because we're going to go back over this and you're not even going to notice the difference. I am really going to build these up so they're nice and dark and nice and bold. I want a very stark uh, contrast on my card panel because I know that I'm going to be using black cardstock and I really want this coloring to pop out. Plus we're going to be doing something with those clouds there once I pull that stencil off that's going to be pretty groovy and these dark colors work well with that. So I'm just going to keep going in with my mini blending tools here and building up my colors till I get them where I want them. And I'm actually just about there. I'm going to bring in a little bit more of that dandelion ink. Make sure that my lines are nice and crisp and color or covered up, colored in. So when I pull this stencil off, you actually see some really good definition there. And it's especially important over those clouds because those are going to be super noticeable. I am going to make sure that I wipe this off before. I remove it. I want to make sure that I don't get any of that ink on those clouds. I am going to color them in, but I don't want any of my ink to touch that. Since these are a hybrid ink, if I take Copics over the top of them, it won't blend in. It won't work away that color and it'll be super noticeable. So right now at this point, you could leave this. You could absolutely leave it just the way, the way it is. You could uh, trim this down, put it back behind your card panel there and you would be good to go. I just feel that there is a one more thing that you can do to this to make it really stand out and look really groovy. And that is going to be doing some shading within those clouds. I do take an eraser to that and to make sure that all of that Tombow Mono Multi Glue is no longer on those clouds. I do not want to color over the top of that with my Copics. It will ruin them. So at this point, I'm going to start coloring in those clouds, and this is actually ridiculous easy. There's no rhyme or reason to this, folks. I basically just put my shadows where I want to put them. They're not even technically correct, but they look really cool, so we're going to call it good. All right, so I have the colorless bl blender, the BV00 and a BV23, and I'm going to bring in that, that BV23 first and anything that dips down at the top of the cloud and anything that goes up at the bottom of the cloud I'm adding that to BV23 in there technically the cloud on the bottom of the sunset maybe the next one up those would actually have quite a bit of dark at the bottom I didn't do that I really don't think it matters I just wanted to get the color in there and kind of break up some of that white so whatever so now I'm bringing in the BV00 and I'm extending those lines out just a little bit more that I had put in there with the BV23. At this point, I'm seeing quite a bit of purple and that purple looks awesome with these particular colors, but I don't want any harsh lines. So then I'm going to bring in the zero colorless blender and I'm tapping over the top of those prior two colors. Some places I work the tip of my marker back and forth with them a little bit. I want to see them kind of diffuse and kind of knock back a little bit. I'm still looking for color in there. I need that color for the depth and dimension. Plus again, that blue violet looks awesome with the yellows and oranges and reds, but I don't want them to be too stark. So I decide that I can bring in just a little bit more of that BV00. So at this point, I'm just kind of tapping it along while I drag my pen across the surface. So I'm kind of doing a, a skipping motion is basically what I'm doing. Once I have that in there, then again, I bring in that colorless blender and I smooth that out a little bit. I trim down that panel and I set it aside. I die cut a piece of my favorite things, black licorice cardstock with my desert uh, sunset fancy die and set that aside. 
I decided that I wanted to add just a little bit more color to the front of my card panel. So I have a piece of Nina Solar White cardstock. This is cut down to four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. I did end up deciding to cut an eighth of an inch off all of the edges so it makes it a little bit smaller and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. At first I think that I'm going to do some ink blending around the edges of this panel and then I decided that that was a total waste of time when I can simply go direct to paper. Now by going direct to paper you are going to get more solid. It is definitely going to be darker and bolder and brighter but I don't mind on this because I have such a bright uh, some bright ink blending on the front of the card panel that is totally fine. After I get the majority of that on there, I do bring in my uh, mini blending tool and I blend some more of that on there. So once it dries back, it's nice and smooth and it looks groovy. So I want the front of this panel uh, popped up and I have this cut down to four inches by five and a quarter inches. And I'm going to take some 3M foam tape and I'm going to put a load of it on the back of this. I'm going to make sure that it's back behind the cacti and that rock formation and all of that so it stands up really well. And then I make sure that I line it up over the top of my ink blended panel. I had to cut all of that out folks because my head was in the way the whole time. But I did make sure that I lined that up very carefully so both of those circles would match really well. I am going to add some more adhesive on the back of this so I can attach it to my ink blended panel here and then I'm going to put this on a top folding card base at this point you could stamp a sentiment on this and call it good I decided to take it one step further and I'm using both pieces out of the desert sunset fancy die with more black cardstock and I cut the shape just like that so I have the frame just the frame and I'm going to line that up over the top of my card panel there you could definitely cut out several of these and really stack these up and get some really good dimension if you'd like. I'm just going to leave it at the one and call it good. You can use any adhesive you'd like, but I end up using some more Tombow Mono Multi Glue and that works really well. I know that that's going to stay nice and secure for me. So at this point, I hadn't decided to put a sentiment on it, but I am going to add some Nouveau Aqua Shimmer to just the clouds, and I'm pretty, putting a pretty healthy dose on there. And then I decided I did, after all, want to add a sentiment. I put it in my Misty Stamping Tool, and I took out the foam pad, since this is a full card and it has loads of dimension on it. And I'm using some Hero Art. It's a unicorn white pigment ink to just simply stamp that sentiment on there. I did stamp it a couple times, made sure it was nice and solid, and then I actually, if it look real close on my finished cards I ended up smearing it a little bit but whatever we're good to go at this point I decided to add some a few more embellishment on embellishments on it I thought I would use some clear drops changed my mind decided to use the nouveau crystal drops instead because they didn't have quite as much dimension as the other drops did so I'm going to finish it up with that and we are going to call it a day I have more details and links down in the description below as well as over on my blog and I have the link to the other video I'm sharing with you today using the Hero Arts Cowboy Life stamp set. I have the full hop list over on my blog, The Pink Envelope, so do be sure to check that out. There's loads of inspiration going on today and also be sure to check out the full release, folks. Hero Arts is doing some really wonderful things. I know a lot of folks were really over the moon for their floral wood mount stamps. Well, guess what? Hero Arts is now making them in clear stamps, so definitely be sure to go check that out. That is it, folks. We are done. We are good to go. I hope you enjoyed my card today. If you did, hit that like button and share it with your friends. Also be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and tap that bell next to the subscribe button so you can receive all future notifications. Thanks again so much for stopping by. Until next time.